is a gorgeous September Saturday in Ann Arbor, Michigan. We welcome you to the University of Michigan. The season opener. Appalachian State, the Mountaineers come to the big house to take on the University of Michigan Wolverines. And for the first time, the maize and blue take the field. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome to the season kickoff of the Big Ten Network. You look at the Michigan Wolverines, they're ranked in the top five. And Charles, when you look at them, especially in offense, there are lots of reasons why. Yes, they have a variety of guys who can make things go on offense. It starts up front with their big offensive tackle, the best blocker in the Big Ten and maybe the country, Jake Long. He's terrific. Also, then you go to the quarterback, Chad Henney. Mr. Consistency takes care of the football, knows how to deliver it to his playmakers. Then Mike Hart, he is the soul of this team, an emotional leader, and also gives them toughness in the running game. And finally, out wide, their playmaker, Mario Manningham. Nine touchdowns in six games last year before hurting his knee. He is a big play waiting to happen. Now, if there are questions about this Michigan team, it's about the defense. Only four starters returned from a year ago. Fortunately for the Wolverines, one of the starters Starters is Sean Crable, their senior captain, and his game is predicated on speed. Ten and a half tackles for loss last year, four and a half sacks. Lloyd Carr says he runs as well as any Wolverine linebacker. Now the team they're trying to slow down, Appalachian State, back-to-back -back years, Division I AA national champions. Last year they did it with a freshman quarterback. And this guy is magic. Armonte Edwards, 2,000 yards passing, 1,000 yards running. He makes them go. And behind him is Kevin Richardson, the Southern Conference his offensive player of the year last year he scored 30 touchdowns great atmosphere as always in ann arbor the 201st consecutive game there have been better than a hundred thousand on hand last year the mountaineers celebrated a national championship the wolverines would like to do it this year you're watching the big 10 network Big Ten Network football is brought to you by U.S. Bank, home of the five-star service guarantee by Cooper Tires. Don't give up a thing. And by Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. Well, and if you're watching at home, would you love to be here? Ann Arbor, Michigan, Michigan Stadium. Over 107,000. Expectations always very high for head coach Lloyd Carr in his 13th year today coaches his 150th game at Michigan looking for a second national championship two national championships already in the hip pocket of Jerry Moore the head coach at Appalachian State he is in his 19th season and today coaches his 300th game as a head football coach at the collegiate level. The tri captains for Michigan. Yes, there are four there. They select one captain for each and every game. That would be Anton Campbell, number nine. But the three tri captains for the year Jake Long, Sean Crable, and Mike Hart for Jake Long, back to back years as a Michigan captain. Only the 11th multiple captain in Michigan's history. A lot of respect for that young man on this team. Michigan will receive to begin this 2007 season. The all-time winningest program in college football history, the Michigan Wolverines. Now there are changes in college football again this year as far as the rules are concerned, Charge. And what do you think about some of these rule changes? We'll give them to you first and then make a comment on it if you wouldn't mind. Well, I know one that's going to pop up there is that we're kicking off from the 30-yard line now. And if you like offense, you love this rule. Defensive coaches despise this rule because now field position is going to change clearly in favor of the offense. Harder to kick the ball out of the end zone and get touchbacks. The clock starting at the snap of the ball after first downs and when the ball is legally touched, 
everything done right now to help the offenses again. Last year, they tried to do some different things to speed the game up, but the offenses are going to like this year's timing rules. Well, Appalachian State on the road in the big house, as nicknamed by the great Keith Jackson. Julian Roush, a senior from Gastonia, North Carolina, set to tee it up. And waiting on the football for Michigan, number four, Brandon Miner, and number 25, Johnny Sears. Julian Roush has an extremely strong leg. He thinks that this rule is not going to hurt him. We'll see on this opening kick because it's a lot longer for these guys to run downfield and cover. Here we go. The college football season underway in Ann Arbor. And a line drive kick fielded at the 15-yard line. That's a tight end, Mike Massey, and he brings it out across the 30. And they'll spot the ball at the 34-yard line. A good return of 18 yards. Chad Henning beginning his fourth season as a Michigan quarterback. He's made 37 consecutive starts, a 27-10 overall record. He will break every passing record at Michigan before the year is over. Mandros, the fullback, number 44, leading the way for Mike Hart. Slips off to the left side and is out to the 38-yard line, tripped up by Jock Rowland, the middle linebacker of the Mountaineers. Let's take a look at Michigan in the backfield. Hart, the All-American, likewise for Mario Manningham. Boy, some weapons all over the field offensively for Chad Henney. And when you have guys up front like they do, All-Americans on the left side and Long and Kraus on the right side, untested. First-year starters, Boren, Chula, and Schillen. Manningham, his first touch today, out across the 40 to the 42. It'll bring up third down and two. So an early third down test for Henny and company and for this Mountaineer defense. It is a huge one for them. And right now, I would think you find Jake Long, number 77, and move behind him and Adam Kraus to give the ball to Mike Hart. They hand it off to Hart, and he has a first down across the 45-yard line. Take a look at his secondary. Very, very experienced, with the exception of Leonard Love. Titus Howard, the senior strong safety, Discipline. He will miss one game. That game is today. But Jerry Moore has great experience in touchstone in Rose, the corners, and Corey Lynch, the senior at free safety. And he to throw, looking to the far side, dumps it off to Massey. Still on his feet, shot down at the 38 yard line, first down, Michigan. And if you're a Michigan fan, get used to that. Why? That's because they have so many weapons out wide. People are going to try and match up and double and bracket the wide receivers. So the tight end has to become effective for the passing game to continue to flourish for Michigan. They've worked hard on it, and Massey's into the game early. Boy, talk about a football family. Massey, of course, his brother Patrick, a captain at Michigan. His brother played at Ohio State, Jim Jr., and his father, Jim, played football at Notre Dame. Massey comes limping back to the sideline after getting cut down by Corey Lynch. Well, at least they got two for Michigan in that family. <laughs> Hard a big hole. Stiff arms his way inside the five. A gain of 27 for the All-American. And this is terrific, Tom. You outlined the inexperienced right side of the offensive line for Michigan. Who's opened the biggest hole in this game thus far? The inexperienced right side. Justin Bourne at center. Jeremy Chua at right guard. Steven Schilling at right tackle. That will do worlds of good for their confidence. Well, first and goal for the Wolverines on this here first possession of the season. And they're going to try to get Hart to the end zone. He does. Four 
11 carries, 46 yards on that opening drive for the senior out of Syracuse, New York. Mike Hart, Jason Gingell. Nails the point after. Of course, he's replacing Garrett Rivas as the Michigan kicker this year. What a start for the Wolverines. Exactly what they drew up. Run the ball, run the ball, throw it once or twice, pound it into the end zone with Mike Hart. Welcome back to Ann Arbor, where Michigan leads seven to nothing over Appalachian State. And they did it the way Bo Schembechler would have loved it. They ran it over the big boy. Jake Long, number 77, the All-American tackle. Mike Hart, their All-American running back. Four carries, 46 yards on the initial drive. Of course, Michigan beginning a season of football for the first time since 1969 that Bo Schembechler is not here. But he's here. He will always be here. Short kick by Brian Wright, fielded by the freshman Coco Hillary, and he is hammered to the ground by Brendan Engelman. So the Wolverines on their opening play, brought to you by Holiday Inn Express, the scoring drive, six plays, capped off by a touchdown by Mike Hart, who rushed for nearly 50 of those yards. So now Armonte Edwards, the sophomore, who as a true freshman did not start until the third game of last season, had one of the greatest seasons any college quarterback has ever had, only the fifth quarterback in the history of college football to throw for over 2,000 yards and run for better than 1,000. Hands it off to Kevin Richardson, and he is bottled up immediately by Terrence Taylor and Tim Jamison. Richardson, like Hart, will become his school's all-time leading rusher before the season is over. We will see a lot of four receiver sets, and they'll run the option out of that set. Up front, they believe Kerry Brown is the best pro prospect they have had in recent memory. Brett Irvin, a redshirt freshman, starts in place of the senior Scott Suttle. Five receiver set, no setback for the Mountaineers. And Armonte Edwards already checking off, making sure his line is getting the call. Short drop, good throw, and a catch is made by Matt Klein, another freshman. And he's out across to the 32-yard line, a gain of six, third down upcoming. For the Wolverines defensively, only four starters returned from a year ago. Greg Banks replaces Brandon Graham in the lineup. One of the returning starters, All-American candidate Sean Crable. In the secondary, Jamar Adams is a Thorpe Award watch list player to begin the year. Morgan Trent returns as a starter at corner. And the spread has already forced Michigan into more of a nickel look, five DBs. Third and four, they cash in on the third down, and maybe more. Off to the races, and going all the way to the end zone, the speedster Dexter Jackson. He was a Southern Conference 200-meter dash champion, and he ran away from the Michigan defense. Holy mackerel. Tom, the one thing we heard from Appalachian State, and when I talked to people around the Southern Conference, what they told me is, one thing about Appalachian State, they can run. They're never intimidated by any one speed because they have it in spades themselves. We saw it on that play. Dexter Jackson, and just as you described, he ran away from the secondary after catching the pass. Wow. Well, now the point after to try and tie it at seven for Julian Roush. Good snap, good hold, and we are tied at seven. The Mountaineers walking into the big house. Take an early blow. Get off the mat as Jackson races for 68 yards and a touchdown. Seven seven, not even five minutes into the game here in Ann Arbor. A pleasure to be joined by the third member of our crew this year. Let's check in downstairs and say hello to Carissa Thompson. Hi, Carissa. Hi, Tom. Thank you very much. When Appalachian State found out that they would be coming to the big house for their first game, the only people more excited than the players were the fans. Three thousand lucky Mountaineers fans have a ticket to today's game, but even more either flew or made the ten and a half hour drive from Boone to Ann Arbor. And Coach Moore even made the joke. Either here or glued to the 
TV. Back up to you guys. Carissa, thank you very much. Boy, we had a great time in the hotel with some of their followers today. And on the ensuing kickoff all the way out to the 43-yard line is Johnny Sears. Back-to-back -back years, and Sears has been the Michigan primary return man. 26 yards, and the kicker, Julian Roush, made the tackle. Our Holiday Inn Express scoring drive, it did not take long. A minute and 36 seconds. Three plays, 74 yards. And for Mr. Jackson, his first receiving touchdown in his last 15 games. And they need a big year out of Dexter Jackson this year at the wide receiver position. He's off to a terrific start, obviously. Well, Michigan back to the ground. And again, it's Mike Hart, and this time defended very well by the Mountaineer defense. First man to meet him, Jock Roman. Let's take a look at our Suzuki keys to the game today. And for Appalachian State, it's steady as they attack, meaning no fumbles, no turnovers, and they did exactly that. They attacked on their first offensive possession. For Michigan, they needed confidence plays on defense. The way last year ended, they left the chink in the armor of the Michigan team. The first drive did not help. And Michigan had so many All-Americans all over the defensive side of the ball, and then they ran into Ohio State and Columbus. And after a very good defensive half in the Rose Bowl against Southern California, things did not go well in the second half. Penny fires, and the catch is made at the 49-yard line by the sophomore from Orlando, Greg Matthews, a gain of six. It'll bring up third down. This is where it's going to be difficult for Appalachian State because the Michigan offensive line, well-schooled in technique, no one got near Chad Henney at plenty of time to come off of his primary target and look for a secondary guy and complete the pass. They're going to need to find a way to get pressure on him while holding up in the secondary. Hart, the lone running back for the first time in the regular season. Michigan is going to the shotgun this year. Here comes a blitz and down goes Henney. Off the corner comes Pierre Banks, their leading tackler a season ago. And he ran right by and looked like the tight end. They had a twist in the middle, and they brushed twisted, and there was a blown blocking assignment. No one at all blocked Pierre Banks. Illegal formation on Michigan, less than seven on the line of scrimmage. Penalties decline, fourth down. I guess we found out exactly why he came free. Didn't have enough guys on the line of scrimmage, weren't quite sure what formation to be in, and they turned a guy loose to their quarterback's blind side. Not good, obviously. Well, Dexter Jackson had very little time to catch his breath. He is standing back at his own 10-yard line to return the punt by Zoltan Mesko. He was a Wolverines punter a season ago. Good kick by Mesco. Jackson from the 15 got a big block. Or did he call for a fair catch? Obviously, the man who made that block, Chase Laws, was unaware that a fair catch had been signaled for. Boy, and he laid a hit big time on Charles Stewart. Not bad for former quarterback, Chase Laws. I think Appalachian State has come to Ann Arbor to play a little football. A 7-7 game, Appalachian State and Michigan. 9.30 to play in the opening quarter, a five-wide receiver set. They open up the field to spread offense, and if Edwards wants to run it, let her rip. And Michigan counters with five defensive backs, and here comes Edwards. Spins off one tackle, not only is he, or did the football come loose? They're saying he was down. The official's all over. Our referee... Is John O'Neill and said that Edwards was already ruled down. Tom, as you mentioned right before the snap, he can run it. That was a designed running play. Just a quick direct snap to the quarterback, and he tried to find a hole. Ball came free, but the officials ruled it was down on the turf. And a good call. Yes, he was down. Corman, the inside handoff, and flags litter the field. 
Prior to the snap, false start. Number 72 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. That is Jonathan Biskey trying to replace the two-time All-American right tackle Matt Eisenhower. Please whistle for the infraction. We talked about the Michigan defense of last year. Simply spectacular until the very end. Yeah, the Ohio State game, they got gashed. And then, of course, USC, the second half. That was a 3-3 game at halftime. But both teams use spread principles to operate against the Michigan defense. That plays right into what Appalachian State does well. After the penalty, a second down and seven. Negating that eight-yard run a moment ago by Edwards. Down he goes. Sean Crable converging along with Will Johnson. A loss of five. Tom, we got our first covered sack of the season for the Michigan defense. Armani Edwards had the field divided in half. He wanted to go to one side and one side only. And Johnny Sears had it locked up on that side at the cornerback position. That allowed the rush to get to him, and Michigan comes up with their initial sack of the season. Well, you can't put a premium on how the Mountaineers cannot make the silly mistakes like the penalty. Jerry Moore told us that yesterday. And now they're in hurt in field position. Edwards steps up. He's in trouble. But he hangs on to the football, brings it out to the 20. And again, Craver in on the tackle alongside Terrence Taylor. So after the eight-yard game, put him at second and two. The penalty backed him up, and the sack takes him out of any threat. And I can't overestimate how important it was for the Michigan defense to have that type of a series. After what had happened on the previous one, the big play early, the secondary had taken a lot of abuse in the offseason. They needed confidence plays. They had a good series there. That will help settle them down. Neil Young, the punter from his own five. Short kick. And it's out of bounds. Let's see where they spot it. Just shy of midfield at the Michigan 48. Only a 33-yard punt by Neil Young. You may remember he missed time with knee surgery, and it was knee surgery to his kicking leg. And they really missed him last year. He's part of, a, part of a, a strong feature of their team, although the last punt is not evidence of what he normally does. Let's see what Mike DeBoer, the offensive coordinator, does here, Tom. He's got great field position. He may decide to try to get his playmakers out wide really involved. And I hand it off to Hart, and just know where to run. Running behind the big left side of Long and Kraus, but Anthony Williams took him down. I'd like to tell you that tomorrow night, Big Ten women's soccer will make its debut on the Big Ten Network. And Syracuse will take on the Michigan Wolverines in high definition. Action starts at 8 Eastern on the Big Ten Network. And of course, here on the Big Ten Network, not only about just men's football in the Big Ten, but men's sports, women's sports, Olympic sports, they're all coming your way. Hard in motion. And Henny to screen to Brandon Miner. Got a good block. And it's run out of bounds. Close to a first down. It appears to be very close, depending on the spot. Got a good block from Adam Krauss. And that's very difficult to do. Watch number 57 in blue to the left of your screen. He sets up. Now he goes out in space. Nice job. Able to knock down the initial tackler who doesn't get close to Brandon Miner. Allows him to gain additional yardage. Well, the spot of the football gave him a first down. You know, we talked about Long and Kraus and how the Long is already an All-American. They believe Kraus will be an All-American, a fifth-year senior. But Bohr in the center making his first start. Likewise for Chula. And Stephen Schilling, a redshirt freshman, makes his college football debut. Manningham at the top of the screen. And he's looking for a bundle. And it's Manningham. Batted down, defended beautifully. On the far side by Justin Wose, a four-year starter is Wose. And an underrated player because his partner on the other side, Jerome Touchstone, gets all the attention. 
this ball needed a little more air. If he has more air towards the pylon, Manningham doesn't have to break stride. When he had to break stride, Mosaic was able to come back into the play and knock it away. But it didn't surprise me that Mike DeBoer took a shot right there, Tom. Field position, big playmakers. They know they like to run the football first down. It's a great time to run the play action pass deep. Second down and 10 for the Wolverines. Arrington in motion. They play fake one way, and Henny just has to throw it away. Under heavy pressure again by Pierre Banks. He delivered the sack on the last Michigan drive. He's a leading tackler from last year. He played the weak side linebacker. They moved him to what they call the bandit position now to allow him to come at the quarterback more. A terrific blitzer, great speed. How about this? Do you know where he developed it? He's the 16th of 17 kids in his family. <laughs> you need speed at the dinner table if you want to get something. You ain't lying. You better get there in a hurry. Well, now a big, important play for the Michigan offense. We talked about their defense standing tall on that last drive. Let's see if John Wiley, the coordinator, goes after him here. Good protection for Henny. Steps up, delivers a strike to the far side. First down for Adrian Arrington to the 25, a gain of 17. How about, the, how about the pass protection for Chad Henney? This offensive line saved the sack on a missed assignment because that was a very deep route, and no one was near Chad Henney, allowed him to really step into the throw and get terrific pace on it. And Adrian Arrington, back from purgatory this summer. Oh, yeah makes the catch. He ought to be the best conditioned guy here, Tom. 60 straight days of running the stadium steps. And there are a lot of steps. <laughs> Hard tackled after a loss of two. Coming up to make the stop, Cam Spear. Spears, a former middle linebacker. They, they, they moved to the weak side because Jacques Roman has come in and played well, but they want a spear on the field. That was a great job of just reading the play, reading the keys, and great straight-ahead pursuit. All you have to do is walk the stairs here at the University <laughs> of Michigan State. You don't, you don't break a sweat, all right? I can't imagine running them 60 straight days. No, they had the coaches alternating <laughs> shifts to watch it. Hey, one guy couldn't handle all that. No. Hart breaks a tackle. And carries inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. So another third down and coming for the Michigan offense after the eight-yard game. You know, Kevin Richardson, Rappalachian State, gets a lot of attention for his vision and balance and burst. How about Mike Hart on that play? Takes the initial hit, looks like he's going down, uses his left arm to steady himself, gains additional yardage. He's added a little weight this season. Got stronger in the weight room because he wants to carry it 25 times a game. He wants to be that workhorse. Well, a third down and four for the Wolverines. Up the mountain near 20. Short drop for Henny. Looks to the middle of the field and finds Manningham for a first down at the 13. Good coverage by Touchstone, but and the last cut by Manningham got in the football. Exactly what I was thinking, because I, the coverage was nice. Sometimes you're just beaten by a better play. And the reason it was a better play, look at Manningham's body and positioning. He was able to firmly block off touchstone, so he had to try and go through his body to get to the football. Manningham, the big frame guy, almost like boxing out in basketball and setting your body wide. But to the near side, they have Matthews to the top of your screen, Junior Hemingway, and they hand it off to Hart. And his last three, four, five carries outside of the eight-yard gain a moment ago. Not much running room after carrying four times for nearly 50 yards on the opening drive. Sometimes things come a bit too easy. All right, the first drive, as you pointed out, 46 yards on four carries. He now has a total of nine carries for 53 yards. So you see how things have stiffened. Mentally, maybe Michigan went to the sidelines and said, guys, we could just run over these people. Not happening since then. Brandon Miner comes in for Hunt. And that second down, Henny to throw it. Ducks it off. To Matthew. Touchdown, Michigan.
shallow cross route. They brought Matthews in short motion towards the football. Then they ran him underneath because they took the other receivers and pushed them into the end zone to clear the space for Chad Henney to find Matthews underneath. And then he wins the sprint to the end zone. And for Matthews, his first career touchdown. Point after is good by Gingell. So Matthews. Out of Orlando, Florida, you're stomping ground. The pride of Edgewater High, home of the Eagles. A terrific program there, and they've been a power for the last 10 years. And now it's all Greg Matthews in high school, and he knew he was special. For the Wolverines, back on top, 14-7, 3-16 to play in the opening quarter. Season opener in Ann Arbor, Michigan. In front of nearly 108,000 in Michigan Stadium, the largest stadium in college football. And I'm sure some are feeling a wee bit nervous right about now. We begin the second quarter with the Mountaineers of Appalachian State on the move, trailing by a touchdown. Richardson bounces off a couple of tackers and is inside the 25, and that'll be another first down for Appalachian State. How about the pinball right there? Bang, bang, bounces off the of people as you described, continues to keep his balance and uses his vision to find the openings. There's contact there, makes a miss. Contact there, falls forward. Great run by Kevin Richardson. Left tackle, I could tell he was shaping up on that last play. And here's a reverse the other way. A good block. And to the end zone, did he get in? No, shoved out of bounds, stepped out of bounds, actually, before he got there at the four-yard line. Dexter Jackson again, a gain of 19. He might be the fastest man on the field. And watch on the left side the blocks he receives. The wall set up. 82, Josh Johnson, 61. Mario Acatelli, the true sophomore, steps out of bounds about the five-yard line with the left foot. That's where he stepped out. Otherwise, he's into the end zone. And Acatelli, the Come final out. play. Appalachian State, their first. Was this is the 32nd timeout. And it looked like he wanted to leave the game. But in their hurry-up offense, Acatelli stayed on the field despite limping and limping badly. And then Charles showing you what the Mountaineers believe they're made of, the kind of players they bring in, the kind of players they recruit. Acatelli goes out there, delivers a big block. He transferred his pain. He took that pain he felt <laughs> in the ankle and transferred it, transferred it to the Michigan defender. You talk about Mario Acatelli. Tom, they wanted to redshirt him last year. They thought he would redshirt, and he ended up starting as a true freshman and was all Southern Conference. He's come back this year. He's one of the cornerstones of a terrific offensive line, playing right next to number 76, Kerry Brown, their preseason All-American guard. Great misdirection. Jackson on the carry, and the wall was set up. Johnson, number 82, had a great block inside the wide receiver. If he doesn't step out, yeah, he looks like he's inside the pylon. But Dexter Jackson is used to carrying the ball. He carried it five times last year, averaged nearly seven yards a carry. In this type of an offense, you get misdirection. You get the option with the wide receivers. The people saw Wake Forest play last year. You know, if you see these types mm -hmm. of spread out teams where you utilize multiple people. We saw it in the championship game with Florida. Remember that? Absolutely. With, with, with all, Percy Harvin being a wide receiver, those guys come around carrying the ball. Same potential here for, for, for the uh, for the Wake Forest, for Appalachian State. I mean, the name you would think of if you're a Florida fan is Percy Harvin. And look to look at the left foot going down on the corner, right there. He needed to be about a half size smaller, and maybe he's got a touchdown. Maybe a little less width on the foot. What a game for Dexter Jackson, the senior, out of Dunwoody, Georgia. Already a touchdown reception. Spanning 68 yards. And now the misdirection play to bring the Mountaineers inside the Michigan five. And don't expect them to all of a sudden go power eye inside the five. They stay in the spread the whole way. Richardson. Met head on immediately by Chris Graham. He was the first man there. 
A lot of the spread teams like to come down inside Tom, cut the splits down, bring in an extra blocker, and go into a different new personality. Appalachian State does not do that. They continue to stay in the spread and run their same offense no matter where they are on the field. They want to keep that distance out there to open the holes up for Edwards and for Richardson. Early movement. And again, it's Fischke, it looked like. The right we'll start. Number 72 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. And that could be the difference between a touchdown and having to kick a field goal. And if you ultimately have to kick more field goals, those are the things that catch up with you in the end. You pointed it out early, Tom. They can't afford to have those types of penalties to take them out of positions of scoring. That's three penalties now for 15 yards, and you can remember every single one of them. Each one has had an impact thus far. They're hoping to overcome this one and still get to the end zone. Three receivers to the top of your screen. Richardson, the third one in. And now four at the top of your screen. Slam. Catch made. And that is a touchdown for the Mountaineers. Hans Bedeshan, born in Haiti, moved to Miami. The only married player on this Mountaineer team. And he celebrates with wife and daughter after that touchdown. Lots of celebration going on. So the mascot, Yosef. And what they did here, I love the call by Jerry Moore because he flooded the zone with four receivers and was able to come inside. And then Badashad used great agility to cut inside Jamar Adams to make him miss the tackle. Point after is good. I know one thing, Charles. You and I have not seen Appalachian State. It is understandable how they have won back-to-back -back Division I AA National Championships. They're here to play. 13.35 to play until halftime. Appalachian State, the touchdown pass to Badashan to tie this game at 14 apiece. Armonte Edwards, 5 of 5 for 102 yards. Let's take a look at last year's U.S. Bank 2006 Big Ten standings. Ohio State beating Michigan on the final game of the regular season to win the outright title. Of course, both Ohio State and Michigan went to BCS games. Wisconsin, you're not allowed to have three teams from one conference go to a BCS game, but they certainly deserved it. Yeah, they didn't go because Michigan beat them head to head. A good kick this time. It is touched and then downed by Brandon Miner. So while we have a moment with 13.35, let's send it back to Chicago and check in with Dave Revson. Dave Revson in the studio and Penn State having far less trouble with Florida International than Michigan is with Appalachian State. Anthony Morelli to Mickey Schuler there. Morelli 6 of 11, 80 yards and two TDs. It's 14-0 Penn State. All right, Dave, thank you very much. Did Michigan. He say, yeah, did he say Mickey Shuler? Is that the son of the Mickey Shuler? That would be something. Huh? There's a handoff to Hart, and he breaks a tackle and then tries to get by Lynch, who stayed on his feet and is able to bring him down after a gain of four. Since their initial drive, Michael Hart and now Brandon Miner coming into the game at tailback have had to make many more moves in order to get the same yardage or close, and not even getting the same yardage as they got on the initial drive. The same holes are not there. The so-called undersized defensive line of Appalachian State playing quite well. Hart now, 10 carries, 57 yards after a 4 for 46 start. And now flag before this play ever gets started. It looks like an early start somewhere. Prior to the snap. Full start. Number 83 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. Mike Massey, the tight end. Those are the errors that we talked about with Appalachian State not being able to afford. They overcame it on the last drive, had a penalty, very next play through the touchdown pass. Michigan might be a little bit shaky at this moment, but tied 14 14. I'm not sure that you've got young guys in amazing blue. Really thought this was going to be occurring in this ballgame. Well, you have both Miner and Hart now in the backfield for Michigan. That's Hart in motion. And Henny to throw. Looking down the sideline and looking for Manningham. And great, I mean great, 
coverage by Jerome Touchstone. The crowd thought there was interference. That looked like just great coverage by a great corner cover. I concur because watch Touchstone. See, you can have contact until the ball's in the air in the college game. So when the ball was in the air was the determination, and the officials determined the ball wasn't in the air while he had contact with the, with, with the wide receiver. What he did was just took him and ran him over the sideline and forced him out of bounds. This is a huge play for Michigan offensively. And his third and long, does John Wiley, the defense coordinator, load up to come after him? Or does he sit back and play zone and try to force a punt? Well, they're coming after the quarterback, Kenny, being chased by Roman, and has to throw it away. How about the Appalachian State Mountaineers? Three and out for Michigan after the game-tying touchdown a moment ago. And that was beautifully coordinated in terms of a defense. The pass rush was there. And still, no one able to get free, even though Henny scrambles out of the pocket, something he worked on greatly this summer. Normally, when a guy gets out of the pocket, there might be a hole for a receiver to find to be open. There was none. Well, Dexter Jackson, standing back at his own 35, it's Mesco to punt it. Should be good field position for Appalachian State at worst. Flag down on the field and turning the corner, trying to anyway as Jackson, but again, a flag all the way back. Was it roughing the kicker by Corey Lynch? Is it roughing or running into? Because it's a difference in penalty. Running into is five yards. Roughing is the first. Running into the kicker, number 47 on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. There's your answer, Mr. Day. So fortunately for Appalachian State, they get another shot at this thing because Michigan still won't have enough for a first down. It's not an automatic first down running into the kicker. You know, that's roughing the kicker is an automatic first down. How in the world do you flag a guy for that? That's he gets, he gets shoved right into the right. kicker and barely made any contact. And in the college game, the determination was made that they're just going to play the play. Doesn't matter whether in 10 or he was forced into it and so on and so forth. I don't know how you sit back there. Guy gets shoved. And I'm with you. It's Iowa. <laughs> Football. You know, the good thing for Appalachian State, they get the ball back. And remember this, running after a punt sometimes seems to be a little more tiring than coming back to receive one. Let's see if Michigan can cover the same way. Well, they come flying down the field again. End over end punt. Jackson from the starter. Across the 40. And he is out of bounds at the 47. It looks like a late Michigan penalty. Field position continues to change if this goes the way we think it's going to, which is a hit on the sideline against Michigan. That'll tap on a personal foul and an additional 15 yards at the end of the play, if that's the call. Dead ball, late hit out of bounds, number 54 on the kicking team. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. That's Austin Panther. Time out. He's the junior college transfer and middle linebacker with a mistake. 14-14, and the Mountaineers get it back in Michigan territory. Appalachian State starts this drive at the Michigan 37-yard line after the penalty. Well, first down, and Edwards out of the shotgun. This should be go time right here for Appalachian State. Now's the time to really continue to attack. They're going to hand it off to Richardson, and he's to the 35-yard line, picks up two. Chris Grant, the senior out of Indianapolis, on the tackle. The last three possessions for Appalachian State. A touchdown, the punt after a big penalty. Yep. And exactly. then another touchdown spanning 65 yards. If Michigan got a sack on that second possession, but that was set up by the penalty where they had to go for it on long yardage. Nine carries today, 30 yards for Kevin Richardson. Coco Hillary in motion. And they just little shovel pass there to Richardson. And he ran himself out of a first down. If he just sticks his nose straight ahead, he probably is able to dive to the 27-yard line. Instead, he's about a, a yard or two short. I am loving this play calling I'm seeing from Appalachian State. 
Because on that play, when they shoved it inside Tom to Richardson, they had taken all the wide receivers and flooded the wide side of the field to put all the action there and threw it back short side. Well, a third and a yard. Richardson, first down and more. Inside the Michigan 25 to the 24. Can you talk enough about the savvy of Richardson, a senior, a three-year starter, and a sophomore Edwards? And what you what you like here, because one thing to understand with Edwards, the reason the ball is handed off inside is that Michigan is keeping a good eye on it. If the defensive end doesn't crash down with the fullback, with the tailback, the ball's handed inside. If he does crash down, Edwards will keep it and come out with it to the out around there. Edwards steps up. He'll hang on to it. And is thrown to the ground at the 21 yard line. That'll be Crable. Of course, many Michigan fans still talk about that play where Crable was whistled for the helmet on helmet hit late in the game in Columbus last year, which kept the Buckeye dry alive. A drive that culminated in a touchdown, the game winning touchdown. And one thing to keep in mind here for Michigan, the tough part about playing a spread team is you have to play what is called assignment football. Sometimes you think more than you more than you react, and that can put you back on your heels. Edwards checking off. Five receivers, three to the bottom of your screen. And the quick slant is Jackson. He'll run away from everybody. Touchdown, Appalachian State. They are jumping up and down and celebrating on the Appalachian State sideline and in the crowd, and wouldn't you? You should if you're an Appalachian State fan. The spread makes you defend every inch on the field. And on that play, they ran what is called a rub route. I'm a former defensive back. That's a pick to me, okay? <laughs> it's a rub route. T.J. Foreman, number 12, rubbed inside. And here comes Jackson to catch the ball and go into the end zone. Well, we talked about as a uh, point after is good, Armonte Edwards. How about the savvy of this 19-year-old, seven of seven, three touchdown passes? We have seen a little bit of everything play calling wise by Appalachian State. A third down and goal upcoming from the Wolverines' five-yard line. What are you thinking here, Charles Davis? If you have to make that play call. If I'm making the play call, obviously Edwards will touch the ball as the quarterback, but I want him to have all the options. I want it to be some type of an option run pass thing so that he can make the decision about what he wants to do. The last time they were in this spot, they actually put him back in the shotgun, and he threw the ball underneath on that rub route. That plays there, obviously, but I want to make sure he has every option available because that young man is magic. Tell you what, this Michigan team needs a stop in the worst sort of way. Mountaineers trying to go up 14 if they get into the end zone. And now Edwards will find the end zone. Touchdown, Mountaineers! This electrifying sophomore quarterback out of Greenwood, South Carolina, went 13-0 as a starter last year, did not become the starter till the third game of the season. And Michigan ran a twist inside and actually opened a gap because there's no one to fill the hole after the twist. Watch Edwards, he sees it. The blocker gets chopped, the, the rusher gets chopped down, Jamison number 90, and he hurdles in to put them up two scores. This stadium, with over 107,000 in it, you could almost hear a whisper. Michigan with two timeouts remaining in a minute 19 to play until halftime. And they have the football on a second down and a yard at the Mountaineer 40. Plenty of time, plenty of timeouts. Terrific field position right now for Michigan. Kenny a pump fake. Looking for Manningham. Instead comes over the middle and the pass is broken up. But here Banks dropping back into coverage as again they were looking for Arrington. That was great bracketed coverage there by Appalachian State. Pierre Banks, number 31, running with the receiver underneath and over the top. Corey Lynch, number 47, their All-American safety. Henning tried to slide it in there. It was a nice throw. 
but a great breakup by the defenders. A third down and a yard. And they're gonna stay on the ground with Miner. And he has a first down to the 35, so the clock stops at 109 until they reset the ball. Michigan offensively hurrying up to get to the line of scrimmage. You do the college game is you get additional mini timeouts with first downs with the chain stopping. So if you move quickly on offense, you don't waste much time. Penny to Matthews. And he's to the 13-yard line. The clock continues to run. He did not get out of bounds. So it's under a minute. It does stop in a minute because it's a first down. Nice call by Mike DeBoard. What he did was he ran Mario Manningham at the top of the screen on a short route, which allowed Greg Matthews to run a one-on-one -on -one route against the safety, Corey Lynch. And Matthews won that individual battle. First down at the 11. And they hand it off to Miner, and he is smothered by Banks. Plus, Pierre Banks is a player, their top tackler from a year ago. Timeout, Michigan. So Third one more timeout, timeout following that timeout. one by the Wolverines, a 30-second timeout. 51 seconds remain until halftime. How about that? The last time trailing at the half to an unranked opponent was inside the Big Ten against their rival Michigan State. And those you understand, rivalry games. This one, people have a hard time digesting. But you just mentioned Pierre Banks has been all over the field. We talked about being the 16th of 17 kids. He's also graduated in three years. Yep. And he's got two years of eligibility left. He's going to leave Appalachian State with two degrees and already has two national championship wins. That's quite a distinguished career with a lot of time left. That's good. That's good. That's good. There, there's college athletics in a nutshell. Yep. That's what you want to hear about. So now second down from the Mountaineers, 15. Henning looks to Matthews, and he's tackled at the five. The clock continuing to run. And we're down to 42, 41, 40 seconds left. Henning getting them up to the line of scrimmage. Don't be surprised here. You got Matthews, you got Massey, number 83, the tight end, who could be a target. Henning. To the corner and just throws it away. Great move by him. Well, he got hammered to the turf by Tony Robertson and Tim Washington. Remember earlier in the game, I asked the question about the pass rush of Appalachian State. Would they be able to get pressure on Chad Henney? They kept the tight end Massey in the game, and there's still pressure. And on fourth down now, they have to kick a field goal following that incompleted pass. And everyone's upset and wanting them to go for it. There's some indecision. Who's in, who's out on the kick team? And they're pretty much out of it. Out of time. I mean, they're in a tough shape on the timeout situation. Well, the holder looking in. Mesco about spending a timeout because he knew they were a man short. And that man is Mike Carter. Third and final timeout. This is the 30-second timeout. Well, you're talking about a senior All-American in Hart and is not on the field. They have to spend a timeout. Actually, what happened on it is it wasn't Mike Hart. Mike ran out late to try and help. But I looked out, and the guy who got confused was Jason Hollis. Uh, was it Jason Hollis Navage? No, excuse me, Greg Banks, number 92. Yep. He was the guy who got Hart. confused. Hart ran out to try and cover yep. for him, and it was too late. They'd already called the timeout. That's more like Mike yeah. Hart. Come Always on. in the Time game. Trying to cover for his yep. guy. So now the field goal from 13 yards out for Jim Jell, who has not kicked a field goal in a real game since high school in 2003. And bangs it right down the middle. You know he had the butterflies waiting until the final 18 seconds of the half to finally get a chance to get a field goal try. And the crowd here at Michigan booing the Wolverines. I don't understand that part. There's no reason to boo getting a field goal. It was the right call because they were, at, they were down, and down in that situation. It was the right call to get because of down and distance. Well, then he's been under fire a lot today since that first drive of the game. And we asked the question earlier, can they get pressure? That one was a blocking assignment missed. Since then, it's just been great pressure by the Mountaineers. Four backs, number 31. Look at Roman number 40 chasing him down. He's, been, he's had to move, and Chad 
Ed Anderson has spent a lot of time this summer working on his movement in and out of the pocket. I don't think he expected today to try to put, to have to put that to so much use in game one. That's not what you had any work on it for. I think he was thinking later in the schedule, but boy, is he getting a workout today trying to use his newfound elusiveness. And I don't think you can say enough about the, you know, not only the, the, the pass pressure, but the pass coverage. Mario exactly. Manningham has caught one pass for three yards in the first half of this game. And he's the big play guy. He's the guy last year out of nearly 20 yards per okay. catch when healthy. Again, coming out of the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. The Repson and Company standing by from Chicago, the home of the Big Ten Network. Coco Hillary and Cortez Gilbert waiting back. There are 16 seconds remaining here until halftime. Little short kick, and Hillary coming up to get it from the 20, dropped it, and he will just take a knee. Why well, take the chance? I think it's a great move. Jerry Moore and the special teams guys, well coached. We're not going to us cost ourselves anything now. We're up 28-17. Let's not give them any momentum to start the second half. Boyd Carr extremely relaxed yesterday when we had a chance to sit down and visit with him. A, a wonderful visit with both of these schools. But he doesn't look very happy right now. No, and I think that a lot of people in the stands are saying, oh, I'd go in there and I'd just rip these guys, blah, blah, blah. I don't think Lloyd Carr and the staff are going to do that. They realize that they've taken a heck of a punch in the first half. They've got to bring them back emotionally and mentally. And if they rip them, I don't think that's going to do it. So I think they're going to go down and say, okay, guys, we have a whole other half to play. Well, the story in the first half of this is Armonte Edwards. Totally. I mean, him and the, and, and the spread offense that Michigan has not been able to solve. And... The defense. Let's send it downstairs to Carissa Thompson. Well, we understand that uh, Coach Carr uh, has decided to get his team in the locker room in a hurry and will not be joining us here at halftime. Here at Michigan Stadium, everybody goes up into the same tunnel, so things can get bottled up. But boy, in a huge rivalry game, how about the Buckeyes and the Wolverines walking up there together? You tell you, if they call me to work security that game, I'm not answering <laughs> the phone. That's, that, that's a full-time job right there to try and keep those, that emotion apart and, and, you know, orderly in the tunnel. That's tough to do. For 28-17 at halftime, Appalachian State in front. And we will be along with the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report right after these messages. The Big Ten Network is brought to you by Yield Guard VT Triple, the yield protection system. By Cooper Tires. Don't give up a thing. And by the new Ranger RZR. See it up close at your local Polaris Ranger dealer. Let's send it downstairs to Carissa Thompson. Co Coach, your team has managed to silence 100,000 people. Your team is up 28 to 17. What do you do in the second half to keep them calm and finish this thing out? Well, we're going to catch the, the best that the Big Ten's got. The, best, the way they would play against Ohio State, Notre Dame, Rose Bowl. That's the way they'll play the second half. And we got to match up with it. We just, you know, we feel like we're in good condition. It's good and hot. We like that. I like the way our team's playing. And you can't ask for anything any better than that. They're playing hard, and uh, we're enjoying the moment right now. We're just going to try to stretch that moment another 30 minutes. Absolutely. I think we should have a write-in for Armani Edwards for Heisman. Congratulations, Thank Coach. You. Keep it up. Thank Back you. up Thank to you, you guys. Team. Well, you heard Coach, our team, and he talked about the heat. You know, and the one thing he talked over and over again was how hard his team practices. They've had transfers come in from other big Division 1A schools in and say Washington in particular. nobody practices like this team. Tempo, all the time in practice. They have to get after it. Mike Hart exercising on the bike. I wonder if there's something going on with him. He hasn't played the last few series of this ball game, so you just wonder about him. But here's the key for me, Tom. Appalachian State gets the ball to start the second half. There's been no more of important defensive series for Michigan since last year, Ohio State, USC, than this one coming up right now. Fielding at the five is Coco Hillary, and he's out across the 25 to the 30, the 35, and the 37-yard line. 
This kickoff rule is going to be a nightmare for defensive-minded coaches this year. We're seeing evidence of it already. Starting field position, 35 and beyond most of today. 31-yard return for the former high school quarterback. He was supposed to be the quarterback, or possibly a quarterback last year. We yep. were actually ahead of Armonte Edwards on the depth chart for a long time before Edwards pulled even, and then they decided to make the move and move Hillary out the wide receiver. So here comes Armonte Edwards. You can't play better than he did in the first half. <laughs> no. <laughs> What's that quarterback rating? Perfect. <laughs> Edwards under pressure, dumps it off to Richardson. Michigan read it beautifully defensively. And a big stop by Brandon Engelman, the fifth-year senior. Crable applying the pressure on Edwards, a loss of four. I would not be surprised here if Ron English, the defensive coordinator in the second half, makes this adjustment. And that is, on pass rush, you beat the guy in front of you. They did a lot of twisting and stunting and stemming in the first half, and it seemed to create a few gaps for Appalachian State. Let's see if they just say, athlete to athlete, you go get that guy. Intercepted. First mistake of the day made by Edwards. And for the first time in a long while, the Michigan faithful are standing and cheering. First two plays of this last series with a straight pass rush by the defensive line. And this was just a bad throw by Armonte Edwards. I think he thought that Corman was looping out when Corman sat down on the route. See, he thought Corman was breaking to the sideline on an out route. And the beneficiary, number 14, Morgan Trent. And to start the second half, Brandon Miner is in the backfield. Again, not Mike Hart. And they hand it off. And a big game by Miner. Inside the 30 to the 26-yard line. Miner's best game last year, 108 yards and a victory over Ball State. That was a tight one. Oh, man, that was a, hey, that one had the people sitting on the edge of their seats here, a max score. But if I'm Michigan right now, if I'm Mike DeBoer, you know what I'm thinking? A little more dispatch in and out of the huddle. I want to ride this momentum that they built up to start the second half. Big play on first down. Come right back out. Again, it's Miner. And Pierre Banks takes a stiff arm and stays with him. A good play by Banks, and he's fired up. So that almost take a little bit of a mini hurry up. In and out of the huddle. Right at him. Bang, bang, bang. Let's see what we can get done. But what is going on with Mike Hart? Finished fifth last year in the Heisman balloting. I think he's hurt. First team preseason All-American. Well, he's standing there with a helmet on as he if to say, played. I won in the game. But he hasn't played a bunch of series, and he was the last guy out of the locker room after the half. And I thought I saw a little hitch in his giddy up. We saw him on the bike exercise and tried to loosen up his legs. And now Massey to tie it in. And Henny to throw. Screen. Setting up the screen. And batted into the air and nearly intercepted. Boy, Jock Roman and Pierre Banks are all over the field. And a big fella getting up. And Number 98, Anthony Williams. And Chad Henny had words for Brandon Miner after this play. Did not run the screen very well at all. He put himself in the same spot as his offensive lineman blocking for him. And after the play, I saw Henny counseling him about, hey, you've got to be over here so we have some space. Third down and eight. They need to get to the 17 to move the chains. And a short drop, incomplete. He had an eye on Matthews, so the Wolverines' decision time. Will they go for it on fourth down? Nope, they'll send up the field goal team. I think it's the right call. Plenty of time left. Still 28-17. We just started the third quarter. While it's disappointing, you don't turn down an opportunity for points because your ego is hurt. Gingell kicked his first collegiate field goal in the final seconds of the opening half. This one a, certainly a bigger challenge. It'll come from, let's call it the 43-yard line, or the 33, so a 43-yard kick. From the 33-yard line. And it's good. Well done by Gingell. So the Wolverines take advantage of the interception and claw to within eight.
Mike Hart continues to get some exercise on the bicycle because he's not getting any on the field. Let's check in with Carissa Thompson. As you just mentioned, Tom, Mike is getting some work over there on the bike when walking by. I asked him, are you all right? And he shook his head yes. That's, that's interesting to me, Carissa, because yep. a lot of the time a guy will tell you he's okay. I'm having a tough time understanding if he's okay. He hasn't played in how many series now? It's been a while. That's my part. So great stuff from Carissa down along the Wolverine sideline. The ball bobbled momentarily by Hillary, but not a bad return out to the 24-yard line. So now all of a sudden, Armonte Edwards blinks for the first time today on the last series of Appalachian State. His team has an eight-point lead. A little better than two minutes into the second half. Lloyd Carr trying to encourage his defense. His defense made a stop with the pick the last time by Trent. The Holiday Inn Express scoring drive, the 42-yard field goal for Jim Gell. Last year, Amante Everett showed an amazing ability to come back after mistakes with big plays. Richardson running behind blockers and a good gain out across the 31-yard line. Brandon Harrison again on the stop. Michigan's got to have that same snap and effort they had on the first defensive series. Good job blocking up front. That was a nice block by number 67, John Holt. For Appalachian State and the rest of his cohorts up front. Richardson wanting the face mask, and the carry is good enough for another first down. So on uh, second and three, Johnson the tackle, but Richardson plows ahead. Michigan has to stiffen up front with their defensive line. They're finding just enough of a crease up front to find room to run. Now they're spreading them out again with the five wide receivers. Edward still looking over. And he'll keep it himself. And again, big running room for Armonte Edwards. That play has been there every time they've called it. That'll be an 11-yard gain for Edwards. They move the chain out to the 45-yard line. And another first down for Appalachian State. A lot of times with the spread, you get those good line splits, which forces the defense to widen out to adjust, and you create the natural seams and gaps for a darter like Edwards to find. I think that's T.J. Corman, junior wide receiver out of Beaufort, North Carolina. Ran a great rub route in the first half. Can you tell a former defensive back the way I say rub? Oh, yeah. Can you tell that sticks in my crawl? I know bit? it does. You've been burned on it enough times. <laughs> well, they didn't need to run a rub on me. No. <laughs> they just ran by me. <laughs> well, Corman able to walk off. Hopefully, he's okay. And right back at it is Armonte Edwards. Throw to Coco Hillary. Got a pretty good block and then steps in between Michigan defenders. And another first down to the Wolverine 41, a gain of 13. Got a good block from Batashan. If you're going to run this play, you run it to your best blocking wide receiver side. And that's exactly what they did. Hans Batashan, number three, does a great job just keeping Brandon Harrison, number 27, occupied. Turns into a big gainer for Coco Hillary. And again, the same play the other way. And read beautifully by the corner coming up to make the tackle. We will have the interception the last series, Morgan Trent out of San Diego, California. And on that play, Brandon Harrison actually got the best of Hans Badashan. Because on that play, Badashan tried to go low and cut him. Harrison just stepped right over him and was right in the vicinity as Trent made the play. They are hoping and waiting for Trent to become a great player. They think he has all the talent in the world. They're worried a little bit about his confidence. They won't tell you that, but the way it ended last year, they need him to have big plays to be have positive feelings about everything that he does on the field. Now a little bit of option. And stepping up to keep the football. Here's Edwards, and it'll bring up third down and 10, an early huge play for the Michigan defense. And the good thing, the good thing there that happened for the for the Wolverines was when the hole opened, it actually closed quickly this time. The pursuit got there. The Mountaineers have cashed in on six of seven third down conversions today. 
The best pass rushers on the field, Tom, for Michigan. Play clock now down to seven. Here they come after Edwards. Steps up, throws to Hillary to the 15-yard line. Twenty-seven yard gain and how about the quarterback Armonte Edwards recognizing and picking up the blitz. He's listed as six feet, 175 pounds and stays in there and delivers the ball. A lot of the times in offenses, uh, Tom, the quarterback is his own blitz control. Meaning if he sees blitz, he knows he has to take the hit. No problem. He has to deliver the football. Edwards has done that today. First down at the Wolverines 14 back on the ground and again it is Richardson with no room to run. Will Johnson had help from others along the Michigan defensive front. So Terrence Taylor's coming back on the field for Michigan. Got a blue wrap on his leg. Remember in the first half he got knocked off the field had to be helped off the field after a big hit. He's now back in the game. Second and ten for Appalachian State. So that's why you used to keep the two-point stance, Tom, so that they can move. They just get it off. And a fake to Richardson. And Edwards bottled up. Maybe, maybe a yard. <laughs> Is that one of the prettiest maybe a yard runs you've seen? Yeah. There's two guys who had clean shots. And he missed. Sean Crable, number two, was the first guy. And if you make Sean Crable miss, you've done you've done some good work. There's Crable. Look at that. And Crable's very agile. Number 37, Chris Graham also missed. OBSA coming in to finally get him down. Third down and eight. Will they come after him again here? The Michigan defense. They got burned the last time. I think that they're going to rush and try and spy on all these receivers. There they do come. They're loaded up. And Edwards finds an open receiver. And he dropped the football. The freshman Brian Quick. To the, to the right side of the screen, the reason that he was so open. That's Quick. Number eight, Brian Quick. He's a true freshman who didn't play much football in high school. Was there was a mistake in the secondary. Jamar Adams, number 22, and Johnny Sears, number 25, both guarded the same man. That left Quick wide open, and the true freshman dropped a sure touchdown pass. Well, now Julian Roush. will try from 31 yards out. And it is good for Brian Quick. And, and look at the coaching staff. They said they're so impressed with him since he set foot on campus in the summer. Trying to keep his head in the game. It's an 11 points game. 31-20 Appalachian State on the road in Ann Arbor with 8.17 to play in the third quarter. Now they talked so much, people wondered about this Michigan defense before this game began, before this season began, losing seven outstanding starters from a dynamite defense a year ago. Now, Appalachian State is not your normal kind of team to try and defend. No, when you're talking about spread offense with the type of athletes that Appalachian State possesses, it's very difficult. And then you put in the principles of a quarterback like Armonte Edwards, who can run it, throw it, option you, make all the moves necessary and has a coolness in the pocket that is amazing. Sears and Miner will wait to kick. Julian Roush has done an outstanding job kicking the football deep today. And this one no different. Bobbling the ball and having to bring it out is Sears. And he is dropped at the 10-yard line. Great. How about B.J. Frazier on this cut kick coverage for Appalachian State, guys? The bobble, and it came into the field of play, so he had to bring it out. Excuse me, let me take that back. 
name is Smith on the deck. I might on my roster. I've got B.J. Frazier yeah. for that number. So my apologies. We run into our Smith first family. double number of the exactly. day. Exactly. As apologies to the Smith family. Terrific play by your son. And now Michigan, unbelievable, oh, Michigan. has to call a timeout. A 30 second timeout. So we'll do it with them. 30 second. No, we're going to keep it right here. Well, let's take a look while we have a moment. We were talking about defenses here a second ago. Now let's talk. Our VT. Yes, is a yield guard VT triple. <laughs> How about that? Defensive and these are guys year. you think could be the uh, Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah, well, James Laurinaitis, that's no surprise, is it? No. Nope. I mean, I can pick that. That's pretty simple. One of the best linebackers in the country last year as a sophomore. Jay Lehman, you may not hear much about him because he's played at Illinois and haven't won very many games. He's a tackling machine. Dan Connor will be the next All-American at linebacker U. And Vernon Golston, I'm so impressed by him. We'll see him next week when we go to Ohio State when they take on Akron. So versatile, so good. First down throw by Henny is a short one. First touch today by Moundros. And the crowd booing here in Ann Arbor. They're beyond restless, aren't they? I mean, they are really upset. They're not just upset, they're scared. I mean, because when you, you come into this season with high hopes, preseason top five team, and you're playing a, a, a football championship subdivision, FCS, formerly one double A team, you don't care how good they are, you expect to win and win impressively. Now you're in danger of being upset at home. And they fire out to Manningham. That is only his second catch all day. And now he's coming back the other way and look out. But great closure defensively. And again, it's Wose. How many times have we called his name today? Number 18, along with flying across the field by Jock Roman, the middle linebacker. Partner, I love the observation because it would have been very easy for Justin Wose and the rest of the Appalachian State defenders to get out of their lanes in their pursuit of Mario Manningham. But they stayed at home. They kept leverage. And so what looked like was potentially a huge play turned into a six-yard gain, even with Chad Henney throwing a block in the backfield. I was going to say the only reason they got a six-yard gain was because of the block by the quarterback. So now a third down and three for Michigan. Minor again in the backfield. No Mike Hart so far here in the second half. And looking around. And a throw and the catch made by Matthews, and that's good enough for a first down to the 25-yard line. You just mentioned Mike Hart, Tom, and I know what he told our colleague, Carissa, Carissa Thompson, that he's not hurt. I don't believe him. That's a nice throw and catch there because Chad Henley actually threw it to the open spot to hit, to hit his receiver, Greg Matthews. He moved him to the spot where Matthews only could make the catch. Fifth catch of the day for Matthews, and here is Brandon Miner, who is playing, of course, four. The... All-American candidate, Mike Hart. I mean, all we can do is ask. All we can do is know? ask. And, he and can Carissa answer. did, and then he answered, and he said, I'm okay. And that's, and I understand that. He's, I think he's a competitor. I'm not doubting his sincerity that he thinks he's okay. But I don't think there's any reason Mike Hart's not in the game if he's not okay. There's just no way. Well, Hart standing there uh, talking things over. On the Michigan sideline, second down and four, and again, it's minor, and the ball is loose. And it looks like Appalachian State has recovered, and that is because they have. So with Mike Hart on the bench, getting his first significant playing time, even going back to last year as minor, and he gives up the football. Look like right there, number 40, the middle linebacker, Jock Roman, strips the ball free, and the playmaker all day long, Pierre Banks, falls on the fumble. They're inside the 30-yard line of Michigan. And remember this, Mike Hart, one official fumble in his college career. 786 touches coming into today. One official fumble. He never turns the ball over. Nope, and he's encouraging his teammates. Well, what, what a game or heart is, though. I mean, you say that, he's not in the game. And he's still with him. This guy. That's why he's a captain. Take him on your team all day, every day. You go big right here, Tom. Richardson 
just uh, really stepping behind some of his offensive linemen is able to stick his nose forward and get maybe a yard or two well here we are Charles we're closing in now under seven minutes in the third quarter we know what Appalachian State is all about we heard about it now we're seeing it. do you think they start getting more conservative I think that Jerry Moore's been around enough to have had too many close calls. I think that he's going to continue to run offense at this stage. They don't go conservative until the score is like this and we're midway through the fourth quarter. Now you continue to run your offense because you can't throttle back these thoroughbreds who are wide open right now. Edwards will keep it himself and breaks one tackle. And then it's smothered at the 25-yard line. I mean, let's be honest about it. You're having a hard time remembering the last time this Michigan defense stopped Appalachian State on offense in this game. Were it not for a drop touchdown a short while ago, you tack on four right now right. to the Mountaineer lead. Exactly. And, and here's, here's the other thing to remember, too. As this game continues to progress and Michigan keeps looking up at the scoreboard, it makes it even harder to come back because you're not worried about playing. You're worried about time leaking away from you. Third and seven. Foreman, who left a short while ago, injured, is back in the game. He was in motion. And down goes Edwards. Did not try and force it. Good pass rush and good coverage by the Wolverines. Jameis in the sack. And that's a big play defensively for the Wolverines because at this stage, they can only give. If you're going to give up points, it has to be threes. You can't give up sixes. So here, another coverage sack for the Wolverines. Nowhere to go with the ball. And I loved your point. He didn't force anything. He took care of the football, took out of Monty Edwards, and gave himself a shot, gave his team a shot at a field goal. A 46-yard try by Roush. That matches his career long, or his season long last year. His career long is 48 yards. Roush puts a leg on it, and it draws back off the upright. He had enough distance. So Michigan. Able to stop Appalachian State for the first time in recent memory. 4.46 to go in the third. The Mountaineers lead the Wolverines 31-20. 31-20 and the crowd standing and cheering as bounding off the sideline. One of the Michigan tri-captains. Mike Hart is back in the game. Next week, we look ahead. You and I will be in Columbus at the Horseshoe. Yes, Akron sir. against Ohio State. And the rest of our lineup here on the Big Ten Network. How about that Syracuse-Iowa game? Syracuse had a tough time last night, but Iowa had to go into overtime to beat them last year. And he's looking for a bundle. Manningham is there, and he overthrows him. For the first time all day today, Manningham beat Wose down the sideline. Remember earlier in the game when he needed a little more air under the ball and Jose came back and knocked it away? This time, he had a little too much air under the ball because if he hits it just right, Manningham is running and, and the crowd down there at the end of the field is, is hugging him. Because that's exactly right. He finally got away from Jose and had him clearly beat. 4.38 to play in the third quarter in front of better than 107,000 at the Big House, Michigan Stadium on the campus of the University of Michigan. And the Appalachian State Mountaineers hold an 11-point lead. Penny in trouble. Escapes a sack and then throws it behind. Massey is tight in. Under heavy pressure again by Tim Washington. And again, that's a young man who transferred from LSU. And is just now learning how to get the tempo in order to get himself to, ready to play at Appalachian State. A lot of guys, they transfer back from the football Bowl subdivision, FBS, down to the FCS, Football Championship subdivision, they think it's going to be easy. You know, oh, I can go play. But now they have to learn how to get it done. So now we've got a third and long for Michigan. Third and ten. And Chad Henney on the last play showed his elusiveness in the pocket, but every now and then he needs to dart up field and just gain some yardage. Michigan 5 of 10 on third down today. Henney fires to the far side, too tall for Massey. Double covered was a tight end, and that's where Henny threw the football. And he was locked on him from the snap of the football. I never saw his head move or any type of, of turn. It, there, there again was Pierre Banks, number 31, underneath, and Corey Lynch, number 47, over the top. That bracket coverage we've seen. But the ball was thrown a little bit outside. 
He put it in the right slot, just a little bit too wide for Massey to get the haul in. Zoltan Mesko to punt from his own 15-yard line. And the Dexter Jackson, we know what kind of speed he has. We've seen it already today. He'll field it on a bounce. Nope, we'll let it go. Got to pick that one up. And that's what his coach is going to tell him. You've got to go and get it. Whether you call fair catch or whatever, you can't let a ball bounce and gain that kind of yardage. That's the hidden yardage that you don't see that changes field position. Well, we have football on this Saturday. Tomorrow, two of the nation's best men's soccer programs will square off. The Bruins of UCLA are in Bloomington to take on the Indiana Hoosiers. That'll get underway tomorrow at 2 o'clock Eastern on the Big Ten Network. Those are two of the traditional powers in the world of college soccer colliding right here on the Big Ten Network. So now Edwards out of his shotgun. Again, we'll hand it off to Richardson, and he's stifled for a gain of a yard. We just received it. A very nice note. Apparently, everybody in town is hanging out in one place and watching us today on Direct TV down in Boone, North Carolina. And in fact, it is so crowded by order of the fire marshal, no one else is allowed to come in to watch this game. <laughs> so for all of you down there in Boone, North Carolina, thank and we you. thank Mike Flynn for delivering that note. Thanks for being with us. Mike's been terrific to work with the SID at Appalachian State. Looks like a timeout from Edwards. And that'll be the first spin here in the second. Timeout, Appalachian State. So, 30 second timeout. So Carissa told us that most people weren't at home. They all came here. So whoever was left, <laughs> they're jamming the place and no one else could get in. And if you're watching from somewhere else and you're thinking about going down there, <laughs> forget it. <laughs> Well, in Boone, North Carolina, they love that man and have for nearly 20 years. Jerry Moore, who, yes, a Texan born and raised, but he calls himself an Appalachian man now. 3.35 to play in the third quarter. Second down and 10 for Edwards. And the handoff to Richardson, and he breaks through. And has a first down all the way out to the 31-yard line. A gain of 15 by Richardson, who's closing in on a 100-yard rushing day. Look at the trap. This is the old Washington Redskins counter Trey. John Holt, number 67. Jonathan Bischke, number 72. Brett Irvin, number 57, all cleaned up with Holt and Bischke pulling from the opposite side to create the hole in the lane for Richardson. And again, they're going to stay on the ground and try to chew up some of this time. Are they getting more conservative? Yes, they are. But, but every we're time now we getting to three minutes here in the third quarter. And here's the, op here's the flip side of it. While it appears conservative, we've seen them run this play all day long, one or two yards sometimes, and then they come back with something similar, and it pops. Like so, two plays so, ago. So, so if you're doing that, people can talk about being conservative. They've been doing that the whole game. Conservatives only get one or two yards. When it pops, that's a heck of a call, Jerry Moore. <laughs> oh, and by the way, there are five wide receivers now here on second deck. Which means that if Edwards pulls it down, he usually finds it a lane. Edwards in trouble. And the ball is loose. And the Wolverines have recovered. It looked like Cravel stripped it and John Thompson pounced on it. A huge play for Michigan. John Cravel's speed we spotlighted at the top of the ball game. He's number two. And he gets there and starts to play right there. Wraps it up, strips the ball free. John Thompson, his first time starting middle linebacker, one of the hardest hitters on the team, handles the cleanup of the ball on the ground. Edwards hasn't made very many errors, but this is a big one that Michigan has to capitalize on here. It's got to be six points for the Wolverines. Yep. Mike Hart is in the backfield. They take over at the Mountaineers 31-yard line. Penny, short drop, in and out of the hands of Arrington. And a few extra pushing and shoving going on. Hart getting locked up on the far side with Gary Therrington. 
And we've seen that a bunch of times before when the underdog has the decided advantage on the team, you know, the, on the favorite, things get a little chippier, don't they? The underdog feels a little more expansive, feels good about it about itself. Home team, a little angry. Well, the big boys don't like it. No, no. And he again a short drop, and again the slant, and this time Arrington hangs on. And that'll take it down to the 24-yard line. We'll say right there, but that's a tough play to defend. A big third down upcoming yet again for the Wolverines offense. They had to make a field goal try. You may remember their last possession. The Cargill passing combination. Matthews has been his favorite target today. And they said he's had a great fall camp. And I'm, I'm saying it right now. The Michigan Wolverines are in two-down territory. I don't think they're thinking field goal at all here. And Hart is out of the game. Miner is in the game, and that is Miner. And he slips his way inside the 20, down to the 15. They'll move the chain. I'm wondering this. I'm wondering this, Tom. And you saw Miner, who had fumbled previously, had trouble there on the exchange, you know, the way he was moving around like a loaf of bread. I'm wondering if Mike Hart is coming in the game in pass situations because of his great pass protection. Because he doesn't look like they're, they're not looking to hand him the no. football. So he's doing what he can. Miner, 42 yards in the day with 11 carries. But I don't think Mike Hart is the run threat now. And he makes a liar of me. <laughs> well, he's able to stay on his feet and plows forward to the 10-yard line. That is his first time in quite some time. The only reason I, the only reason I even thought that was on the key third down play, they substituted for him, you know? And Miner came in and carried the yep. football. So it made me think, hold it a second. You got the whole time, the guy's going to be a major all-time leading rusher. He's not touching it. But that's good coaching, though, right yeah. there. I mean, you know, the, the opposition might be picking up on that. That's Hart's first carry of the second half. Under a minute here to go in the third quarter. And Hart will get it yet again. He covers up the football better than any back in the country. And he has a first down inside the five. First and goal, Michigan. Now this looks more like the first drive of the game. Look at them in the zone blocking. Everyone steps to the right, finds a person, and gets into the gap and, put, and puts a hat on a hat. And when you put a hat on a hat and Mike Hart finds a seam, Good things happen. And look how he keeps moving the pile forward. First and goal. Hart again. And into the end zone is Mike Hart. The great desire, the great leadership of Mike Hart. He just ran right through Anthony Williams and Jock Roman and leaps into the end zone. I've been wrong so many times, so what's another one, right? <laughs> Mike Hart must not be hurt. So the question comes back, how many series did he not play and why? I, I can't help but I have to ask that question. That's Mike Hart. There's no question Key about it. situation, you give him the ball. So now they're going for two to try to get within a field goal. They're down by five, and Hart is in the backfield. And he's checking off in the line of scrimmage in a four-receiver set. And he bobbles the ball and will not get in. That's a big stop right there by Appalachian State. I don't know if they so much stopped him as, again, Michigan shoots itself in the foot. But the Wolverines get the touchdown by their leader, Hart, and trail now by five. 31-26, and Mike Hart right back on the bicycle. You know, Carissa Thompson was uh, along the sideline a moment ago, asked Mike Hart a while ago, are you hurt? He says no. But he's showing his heart now. As a leader of this team, he came back for this. He came back along with Jake Long and along with Chad Henning to try and make amends for what happened against Ohio State and then Southern California last year. And look, at, and even when he was out of the game, you made a great point, Tom, of noticing Mike Hart involved in the sideline discussions, involved in the huddles before guys went out on the field. He never mentally checked out of this football game. And now he's physically inserted himself back in and in a big way. Michigan, 
we think they've got more than a quarter left to play, and it's down to a five-point game. All the pressure to me now shifts back to Appalachian State. And this has all of a sudden become a bit of a tentative group now for Appalachian State. They turned the ball over twice here in the second half. Yes, they have kicked a field goal, and they had a touchdown pass dropped. Hillary across the 20 to the 26-yard line, and that's where Armonte Edwards, who did not make a single mistake in the first half, hit on seven of seven passing, threw for three touchdowns. He ran the ball well, but here in the second half, has thrown an interception and fumbled the football. And where this game has started to turn, is I give you two-play sequence. The drop touchdown by Quick, and then the field goal that hits the upright as he hits the, 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 front, the upright and bounces back. That two-play sequence really helped Michigan in a big way. Devin Moore has come into the backfield, replacing Richardson, at least for a play. And they come out throwing, dangerous throw at that, and Batashan hangs on and gets out to the 31-yard line. My, oh my, what a dangerous throw. He but he made it. Go back to the, the first series of the game when he threw that same route to Dexter Jackson, but he put it in the right spot for Dexter Jackson. Here he threw it behind Batashan, who had to make the circus catch. That is the end of the third quarter. We could be a quarter away from one of the greatest upsets in the history of college football. We're back to Michigan in a moment. Oh, what a day it's been. Season opener in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And we open the fourth quarter on a first down carry by Richardson. He spun to the ground by Sean Crable. 31-26 in front of Appalachian State, the two-time defending FCS champions. That's formerly called Division I AA. They've won it all in back-to-back -back years. And here you have Michigan ranked in every top five preseason poll down as we begin the fourth quarter. But right now, Michigan actually has the momentum going their way. If they can force a punt or get a big play here, look out. Play clock. Play of game. Play of game. Play of game on the offense. Five yards penalty. The two stay back. And perhaps the idea of, of everything going on around them yep. is starting to shake up Appalachian State a bit. They are they are becoming more tentative. You asked that question a while ago. At that point, I thought they were still running their offense, but it seems like they're taking more time to do everything right now. The idea of winning this game really looms heavy over the heads of Appalachian State. Edwards fires behind the intended target, Hillary. He was open. But the ball wasn't there. When you try to be too precise and too perfect in throwing the football, you end up doing this. Earlier in the game, he was freewheeling it, wasn't he? Ball was right where it was supposed to be. The last few throws, the last few plays haven't quite been that way for Armonte Edwards. Bring it out for the Michigan defense, and they should get good field position as Neil Young will punt from his own 12-yard line. And the ball will bounce. Johnny Sears going to pick it up on the bounce. Stiff arms, a tackle, and then escapes. And a flag is down on the play. From where he broke the tackle initially, Russell Wilson receiving that stiff arm from Sears. And is this going to be a face mask penalty? That's what Michigan is indicating. This is foul. Face mask. Number 59 of the kicking team. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. See, and that was not the five-yard version. That was the big one. Right there. Number 59, Russell Wilson, the long snapper. Guilty of the infraction. That puts Michigan in great shape at the 34-yard line of Appalachian State. And now this crowd quiet so much of today. Starting to smell it. The 
Arrington and Manningham have one on ones on the corners. They're going to hand it off to Hart. Big hole. Inside the 30, down to the 27. Roman losing his helmet on the play. Big offensive line of Michigan really starting to, to assert itself in the second half here. Now they're starting to carve a few gaps for their runners to go through. Again, it's hard. And he skips his way all the way down to the 20-yard line. And I'm trying to get into the head of Mike DeBoer, the play caller for Michigan. And what I'm sensing from him right now is I don't need a big play. You know, I want to grind these guys a little bit. My guys are feeling better about themselves. If we can go ahead and continue to run the ball with this type of success, I'm not going to change up on that and go for any big strikes. Well, certainly so. something we heard from, you know, back doing the Fiesta Bowl when it was Boise State against Oklahoma. Many believed that as the game went on, Oklahoma could wear down the Broncos. And perhaps that is a thinking here, although early movement along the Michigan offensive we'll line. Number 57 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. I mean, let's face it, if you just look at sheer size, there is no contest between this Michigan offensive line as opposed to the Appalachian State defensive line. Left-hand side, number 57, that would be Adam Krause, the All-American can All candidate at guard. Jumped down a little bit early, and the ball was coming to his side of the line. First and 15, they play fake to Hart, rolling right handy, being chased by Banks. Throws across his body and intercepted. Leonard Love shoved out of bounds. What a huge play by Leonard Love in the Mountaineer defense. A 26-yard return. Penny was feeling the heat. And what we saw was one of the few mistakes Chad Henney will make on a play like that. Because on this bootleg, as he fakes it to Hart and comes outside, he's trying to hit Massey, 83, a short target. Instead, he tries to throw back inside, and that's a cardinal rule. Don't throw back inside after you've cut the field down in half because you've constricted it. Now you've got too many people in the small area. Ball should have just gone sailing over the sideline. Chad Henney doesn't ordinarily make that mistake. Well, now 12-23 as the momentum is swung back the other way. First time in a long while. It's come to the Appalachian State side. And again, they stay very conservative now as they hand it off to Richardson. Now for Armonte Edwards, we talked about what a sensational first half he had. The sophomore out of Greenwood, South Carolina in the second half. Five of eight for 41 yards after a seven for seven first half. But in the second half, he has also fumbled the ball and thrown an interception. That's the key, because five of eight doesn't sound bad, but you just made the point of why it's been a difficult second half. Miss Reed. Between the quarterback Edwards and Dexter Jackson, so this huge defensive play made by Appalachian State to go all for naught if they can't convert on third down. And Michigan's secondary has gotten more aggressive in the second half. The coverage much tighter in the second half. We saw a lot of guys running free in the first half. So far, I'm seeing a lot, a lot better coverage out of the defensive backs because they're getting increased pressure from the defensive line. Well, do they play the field and possession game here now? They hand it off on third down? No, play fake. They're going for a first down. Intended throw across the middle. Great coverage again. You just talked about it, Charles Davis, by the Michigan secondary. So three and out after the interception. In the first half, he's wide open. In the second half, we're seeing the bracketed coverage that we've seen from Appalachian State. Now the Michigan Wolverines had two guys in the area to one receiver for Appalachian State. Johnny Sears stands back at his own 25-yard line. 
And the punt by Neil Young. Good kick. And a fair catch made by Sears at the 23-yard line. 11 31 to play at Michigan Stadium. And the home team trails 31 26. We'd like to welcome those of you watching Northeastern and Northwestern today on the Big Ten Network. Here, a stunning three plus quarters of football. Appalachian State leading the University of Michigan 31 to 26. Michigan with the football. Starting this drive from its own 24-yard line, first and 10 Wolverines. So again, we'd like to welcome those of you joining us from Northeastern and Northwestern here on the Big Ten Network. Michigan, a first down carry by Mike Hart. With the Wolverines trailing Appalachian State back-to-back. Division one double-a national champions, but are coming into Michigan in front of a paid crowd of hundred nine thousand two hundred and eighteen Coach Jerry Moore's team has come to play Second down and they stay on the ground and Hart breaks into the open field and is shoved out of bounds close to midfield And Hart join with Leonard Love yeah, and Leonard Love threw a little verbal trash Hart's way after shoving him out of bounds. What Leonard Love has to realize is how far downfield he is before he makes this play. Watch. Mike Hart's chewing up the ground. Now, now you're going to throw a little trash his way. That's not the time. He just run for a first down and more. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, no one cares about that play if you're flexing. 17 carries, 112 yards for Hart. And now Michigan at midfield with less than 11 minutes to go. Brandon Meyer. Meyer just colliding. A violent collision indeed with Jock Roman. Knocked his helmet off. That's about the second or third time Roman's ha ha hat has been off this ball game. Well, he might need a little better fit from the or a haircut. equipment man. Once again, folks, football is not a contact game. It's a collision sport. A gain of two by Miner, who stays in the game. And uh, not sure what the delay is here. Is this a timeout? Might have an injury. Oh, yes, we do. Walking away is Jeremy Chula, who was running in a neck and neck race for the starting right guard spot with Alex Mitchell. And then Mitchell got hurt just a couple of weeks ago. And he is unavailable for the first two games of the year. So Mark Ortman, number 71, is coming to the game to replace Jeremy Trula. And that kicks, it looked like they kicked Steve Schilling, Stephen Schilling, number 52, from tackle into guard. Mike Hart again with the football, so a third down upcoming. Looks like third and about well, four yards for the Wolverines. Mike Hart showing the stamina that we've heard about. Legendary now that he's back into the ball game. Missed a bunch of series in the middle part, but he's back now when they've needed him most. Biggest play of the game offensively for Michigan. Penny fires. What a catch made by Matthews. First down. We welcome those of you watching the Youngstown State Ohio State game here at Michigan Stadium. Over 109,000 on hand in Appalachian State. The back-to-back -back Division I AA national champions lead the Wolverines 31-26. We're in the fourth quarter. The play blown dead before it ever got started. Sophomore quarterback Armonte Edwards. Play through step. Ball start. Number 71 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Armonte Edwards, a perfect 7-for-7 seven seven in the first half through three touchdown passes. And Michigan just looked completely dumbfounded. 
trying to slow down the Mountaineers offensively. Here in the second half, things have tightened up considerably by that Michigan defense. Edwards has turned it over twice, an interception and a fumble. And I go back to the drop touchdown pass by the wide receiver Brian Quick and the missed field goal, and things have changed ever since those two plays. Mike Hart was on the bench for an extended period of time for those of you just joining us. In fact, did not carry this entire second half until the last Wolverine drive. And look at him, zone blocking. That just means you just step in the area from where you come out of your stance. Just take a step to your right or your left. The whole line does it. It's like they're all on a track together. Everybody's stepping the same way, getting your hand wide and your inside hand to punch. And whoever you find in that area, you try and move and clean out. And it's up to the back to find the gap to get through. And Mike Hart has found those in the second half. Hart out his 20th career 100-yard rushing day and three consecutive season openers. Here's Miner. And a flag comes down. Gotta believe this will be a hold more than likely. It came in that quickly against the Michigan offensive line, but we'll wait and see. Came in from the linesman, too, off, of the, off to the side. Well, false start. Might have had a receiver out wide just get motion a little bit too quickly. Basically Illegal flag. formation. Less than seven on the line of scrimmage on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. How many times is that today for Michigan? That's right, two, three times we've had that. So you count the interior guys as five, and then it's the wide receivers, because sometimes what you get in motion is sometimes the receiver has to step off the line in order to be legal, and another has to step up to the line to be legal. Somebody didn't do one of those two things. This is a huge play for Michigan. You don't want to be facing third and 14. In a second down and 14 at the Mountaineers' 42-year line. Penny steps up, fires, and in and out of the hands of Matthews. Great coverage by the linebacker, Cam Spear. And even if he catches that one, what do they gain on that? Back to the line of scrimmage? Really had nothing there. It's a great job of coverage by Appalachian State. It would have been a terrific catch, and he would have gone down about where the line of scrimmage is. This could be, and there's still a 7.45 to go. This could be the biggest play of the game right here and right now. And it could be two down territory. They may think about if they get yardage here about going for it on fourth down. Massey in motion. Henny under center. Steps up. And he will run. And is shy of the first down to the 33 yard line. They need to get to the 28. He was tripped up by Roman. Do you go here down five with seven and a half to play? I, I think that you do. You know why? Because you're down five, field goal does nothing for you. You're too deep in territory to punt the football. I think you go for it here and try and pick it up with your high octane offense. Chad Henney trying to do his Armonte Edwards impression, and for him, that was quite good. Hart the long setback. On third down, or fourth down, and we'll call it five. Remember, Mike Hart's a good receiver if they can get him out in the pattern. He may have to stay in and block. They're going to throw, and they step up, and incomplete. So Appalachian State takes over on downs. Looking for an interference call is Massey along with Hart. But Jerry Moore's team stands tall, and now Lloyd Carr and company are trying to do the same on defense. Oh, my goodness. Under seven to go. The Wolverines down. Big Ten Network Football is brought to you by U.S. Bank, home of the five-star service guarantee by Yield Guard VT Triple, the Yield Protection System, and by Buffalo Wild Wings. You have to be here. Now the Big Ten Network kicking off our inaugural Saturday of college football. Chad Henney and the Wolverines trailing Appalachian State. 31-26, safe throw there, and then Corman fell down. Yeah, they had, they had a better play there, didn't they? I mean, they had a better opportunity if Corman doesn't fall down on that play. And I like the play calling, because just as, as this drive started, it flashed in my mind, this is not the time to totally go turtle here. You know, if you, if you have to say, you don't make a crazy throw, but run your offense. You need first downs. Run like you need to score. Not try and protect the lead, because protecting the lead hasn't worked all that well. Well, you can just feel the anxiety in this stadium. Knowing we're down to 
the six-minute mark, and the Wolverines are trailing and don't have the football. There's a sack of Edwards. Grable, along with Terrence Taylor. And the clock continues to run. We're now under six. And it's a monster third and long coming. And Sean Crable's done a great job. Tim Jamison from the backside, number 90, actually flushed Armonte Edwards into the pocket, which set it up for Terrence Taylor. In the first half, Appalachian State, six of seven, converting on third down. In the second half, one for five. Five receivers set. And they're coming after Edwards, and they got it. Grable again. Well, this Michigan defense has been far better in the second half than in the first. Watch Adams, 22, in the middle of the field, the free safety. He's running up to go cover someone. That tells me they went all out. Ron English said all out blitz, man-to-man -man coverage, no free safety in the middle. We're going to get him, and they got it. Great call by Ron English, the defensive coordinator. Now the punt by Young. And coming up to get it, a fair catch signal for, and then bobbled and able to cover it right back up is Sears. Great field position for Michigan. For seniors, Chad Henning, Jake Long, Mike Hart. One of the biggest drives of their career coming up. Michigan trailing 31-26. We talked about how big is this drive. Guys like Jake Long, Mike Hart, Chad Henning, all returning. Sean Crable for a senior year at Michigan and a chance to beat Ohio State, something this senior class has never done. A chance to win a Big Ten. And now Hart, the senior, still on his feet. Cuts it back the other way. Hart to the 10, to the 5, touchdown! One man's drive and desire. None bigger on this Michigan team than Mike Hart. The soul of this ball club shows it again. And they're going to go for two. It is a one-point lead. Minor in the backfield. They'll give it to Minor. He falls down. So for the second time today, the Wolverines fail on a two-point conversion. And the question most should be asking, even after the 53-yard run, why is Hart out of the game? So 32-31 Michigan. Michigan's first lead since it was 14-7. The heart, the soul, as you said, Charles Davis, of the Wolverines is Mike Hart. No question about it. It's been like that for a long time. And his desire and, and, and the inspiration he provided coming back into this game, because they've blown a few opportunities, Tom. You and I talked about that on commercial breaks the second half they were there and now they finally get to the end zone can the defense continue to play as spirited as they have most of the second half all right now Appalachian State has two timeouts remaining and they're down one you know it's weird down one that might loosen them up to play as they did earlier you know <laughs> here's Hillary from the one out across and tackled to the 27. Good return and a good tackle. Made by Austin Panner. He committed a big penalty earlier in the game. So Armonte Edwards. The ball doesn't quite get to the end zone. Hillary trying to get into the seam. 
great job by Panner, number 54, tripping him up. If he doesn't take him out there, there's a possibility for Coco Hillary to gain big yardage. And now this defense encouraging the crowd, which has been by and large silent all day long. Armani Edwards, a sophomore. Can he now lead his team down the field? Low. Intercepted. Brandon Engelman. looking off and coming back to the other side and this one is just a, a pass that's too far away for Corman to get to the only person who could have caught it was Brandon Engelman and that he did so Michigan right back on offense and again Mike Hart is not in the game it's Brandon Miner after Hart went 53 yards a moment ago for a touchdown and Miner will get the football Still on his feet. He needs to think ball security in this situation. Ball Who's security the most ball security now? back in the, in the country? Mike Hart. There's got to be a reason for him not in for being here. Timeout. Now. Appalachian State. For a second and a half, a 30 second timeout. I think Mike Hart's going back on the field now. He's probably getting a little extra break after that long touchdown run. Miner getting the first carry. But the big thing now is ball security. Again, don't go turtle. Don't stay, you know, don't go into a shell. But give it to that big house and let him try and wear down Appalachian State and try and close this one out for Michigan. It has not been a particularly good day for Chad Henney. Hart really sat most of this game on the bench. He obviously started the game. He played through, then, what, through midway through the second quarter, and then we didn't see him again for a long time. Did not get a carry until the very end of the third quarter. And since he's come in the game, they have scored touchdowns to take the lead. It's one of those things that made me go, hmm. Where's Mike Hart? Mike Hart, said, that. Hey, hey, Mike Hart said, I'm coming back. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I just need to get on the bike. I just need to get on the bike. You know, he did, he did his Lance Armstrong impersonation, and now he's back out there. So Hart is indeed in the Michigan backfield. Second down and four, 4.15 to go in Ann Arbor. Foul number 44. That takes you to Mike Hart. And there's Hart for a first down. <laughs> and what I meant by that time was follow Mark Moundros, number 44, the former walk-on fullback. He's coming right at you. See him right there cleaning up Jock Roman, number 40, as the lead blocker. Mark Moundros is going to take you to where the point of where the uh, play is going to be. The problem is trying to get to Mike Hart through him is very difficult. Of course, his brother Kirk was a fullback at Michigan. Under four minutes to go, a new set of downs for the Wolverines. And back to the ground and Hart. And able to get maybe back to the line of scrimmage. They're in good shape as the clock continues to run. Appalachian State down to one timeout remaining. Well, you can't say enough about what Appalachian State has done here today. It may not be a winning day after it looked like it had a real good chance to be one of those just a short while ago. But these young men and this entire staff, this entire university has been spectacularly represented in Ann Arbor, Michigan here today. And that man, Jerry Moore, will have more than two national championships to his credit when all is said and done. He might make it three in a row this year in the FCS. Which no one has done before. The closest we've had is Jim Tressel, the head coach at Ohio State, when he was at Youngstown State, won three in four years. The yield guard, BT Triple, defensive player of the game. Who else but tri-captain Sean Craven? Look at that. I mean, those are numbers. And the effort and the hustle and the leadership that he's shown throughout the, throughout the day has been quite impressive because he never let his guys check totally out of this game mentally. He made them stay with it. Third down and five. Yeah. 
And then he was going to throw on a third down there. Delay of game on the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat third down. I got to tell you, Charles, uh, you know. Look, this is our first game here, but but I got to tell you, I, now whether he would have thrown the ball, maybe they were trying to let the clock run out, I don't the play so. clock, I have no idea. But why in the world are they throwing on third and five? I think because despite the bad throw earlier, there's a lot of trust in the senior quarterback, and he wanted to try and get this first down to continue to keep this clock moving. And he gets roll on third down and 10, and the Pats thrown down to the 29-yard line. So it'll bring up fourth down for the Wolverines. Clock running down to a minute 50. We welcome those of you watching today. Florida International at Penn State. Here, outside of a 14-7 lead. Appalachian State for a third and final timeout. By Michigan. Second timeout. Late in the first quarter, this game entirely belonged to Appalachian State leading up through the first half and the better part of the third quarter. But two significant plays, a drop touchdown pass in the end zone by Appalachian State, a field goal try that hit the upright. Obviously, a total of three points were scored when it could have been and should have been 10. And right now, the difference is one. As Michigan, will they try a field goal here? Coming up next, it'll be the Big Ten Post Game Show, a complete wrap-up of all the Week 1 action that's coming up right after our game. Do you kick a field goal here? Yes, because you're in range. Ball's at the 26. So I think it's, what, a 43-yard field goal attempt? Gingell should be able to make that. He should have plenty of legs for that. He's already made one earlier. His confidence should be high. That is, you know, he's got to get the butterflies out of the way a little bit. You protect, you attempt the field goal because you make it, you're up four. That means a touchdown feature. That's a long way to go for the Appalachian State. Sean Griffin, the snapper. Mesco, the holder. Gingell, the kicker. And that is blocked to the line of scrimmage. And they're telling him, don't touch it. So they cannot kick the field goal. So they'll spot it. There was a final spot on that play. It'll be the 20-yard line after that ball rolled into the end zone. For 32-31 Michigan, we'd like to remind you our copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Big Ten Conference and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Big Ten Conference. I can hear people now screaming, why did they kick it? Why did they kick it? Well, it's fourth or six at fourth or fourth and six at fourth or seven. So what are your odds of making that at this stage? Very difficult. Field goal puts you up four. You miss it, you're still in the same spot. 135 to go. Edwards can really run, and he's off to the races. A big pickup. And he's out to the 45. Bear in mind now, a minute 30 left to go. Appalachian State is out of timeouts. But all they need is a field goal to get out of here with a win. So that's why people are saying, well, you should, you got to go and keep the ball. Well, hey, you kick the field goal and you make it your up four. Because they missed, everyone's going to say, well, why'd they do that? It was the execution, not the idea. The idea was correct. Now, how do you keep them out of field goal? Like, remember, no timeouts, but every first down stops the clock. 18-yard game by Edwards. Remember, Appalachian State led at halftime, 28 to 17. Doubling is Hillary. He's going to throw the ball. And he just is shoved out of bounds. They wanted him to throw the ball down the field to Josh Johnson. So the clock stops at 122. Felt it coming at us because of the motion. When they ran the guy in motion, he didn't get into the proper spot. Talk about Kevin Richardson, the running back. And the timing of the play was fouled up right from the beginning. He watches, he goes into motion here. He ends up running in front of his receiver. Normally, you go behind. That's where I thought, okay, he's trying to get position to block. And Hiller is a former quarterback. Great job by Michigan smothering it. Second down, they're coming after Edwards. And he gets it away, caught by Corman. Dances away from one tackler down the sideline to the 40-yard line. What an unbelievable run by Corman. He juked a tackler and stayed along the sideline. A gain of 20. He beat Jamar Adams. And what a nifty move on the sideline because my first thought was get out of bounds, save time. 
And when he made the move inside, I said, oh boy, and then he got additional yards of first down, then got out of bounds. Great job by T.J. Corman, number 12. So hold on a minute. A one-point game, and Appalachian State getting close. Here they come again. And a catch is made by Batashan again. Remember, Appalachian State out of timeouts. That is not a first down. The clock continues to run. Michigan is going to win or lose this game with their defense, which was the question mark coming into this season. And a throw and a catch. And is it enough for a first down on the lean by Jackson? It is. So the clock will stop. 50 seconds remain. And all of a sudden, they're getting very close to field goal territory. In fact, they are well within the range of Roush. His career long is 48. They're basically there right now. Michigan fans are wondering who's going to make a big play on defense. Can Sean Crable do it again? Edwards rolling left, throws across the middle, caught by Hillary all the way to the five-yard line. Now, Michigan's got to think about timeouts because if Appalachian State runs it down, they'll have no chance to retaliate. This is absolutely unbelievable. It looked just a moment ago like Appalachian State could not get off the mat, and now it's first and goal. Timeout, Michigan. So you got to think about 30-second timeout. timeout. That's what I'm saying, but Michigan, they're, they have two timeouts. Now they're down to one. They have to utilize these in case they have to go back and get the ball. They want to keep some time on the clock because Appalachian State's going to try and run it down. Well, you talk about some of the greatest upsets in the history of college football, and we're going way back now. In 1950, Navy shocked Army. An Army that was one of the powers of the country then at that time. Notre Dame in 1957. Now, granted, it is Notre Dame. Yes. But Oklahoma had won 47 consecutive games. Back in 1957, the Irish stopped it. In 1956, Notre Dame was 2-7. and seven. Center College beat Harvard, the football power in America, in 1921. Bo McMillan's praying colonels with the big upset. And Carnegie Tech over number four Notre Dame in 1929. This game today would rank unquestionably with every single one of those. Remember who was the head coach of Notre Dame in 1929? It'd be Knute Rockman. Now Roush was sent out initially on the field for a kick. And they pulled him back. Apparently, they're not going to try a field goal yet, but they're out of timeouts. Out of timeouts, so what you can do here... That is a field goal. field goal. They can't afford not to do it. Russell it. Wilson, the long snapper. Hunter Stewart, the holder. Julian Roush, the all-time leading scorer among kickers in Appalachian State history. This is for one of the greatest upsets in the history of college football. And it is good. A two-point lead for Appalachian State. There is still time, of course, for Michigan. Only down two with 26 seconds left. But Roush drills it through. That was one of the guttiest drives I've seen in a long time. And I made a comment a little while ago, and, and I wasn't sure I was on track. I'm still not sure, but the idea was they were playing a little bit tighter. We noticed that, right? Where things weren't as freewheeling for them. Then Michigan goes ahead. It almost frees you up, almost liberates you to go back, because now you have to go back and try and win the game. And boy, that sure worked it. That looked like what we saw for most of the game, didn't it, with Appalachian State? Well, that's a great point. You know, now they're like, okay, now we're back with it. Now for Michigan, here's the deal kickoff from the 30-yard line. The new rule comes right into play because Roush has a great leg, but if he doesn't get it through the end zone or, or in a spot where you can't return it, you've got a chance for a great return if you're Michigan. Now, does Appalachian State try something, you know, kick it short, squib it? Well, that sets up field position. Michigan only needs a field goal. First downs, sidelines in, your, in running your offense to try and get one more opportunity for Jim Jell. Well, the Michigan fan and some of the student body trying, trying so desperately to get behind their football team. But outside of that small number of people in a stadium that has over 109,000 fans in it right now, there's not much noise. Near misses in the past by Appalachian State last year at North Carolina State. They played LSU so well 
back in 2005 down in Death Valley. In 99, they lost on a last second play at Auburn. And they've had numerous close calls, but nothing like this. Do you know they've got six wins in their, in their history over what was Division 1A, or football bowl subdivision teams? To this date, all of those wins have been over Wake Forest. If they could add Michigan, oh my. They're now a short kick, very returnable for Miner at the 20-yard line. And he is still on his feet out to the 20 or the 34-yard line. So Michigan, one timeout remaining. Just 21 seconds left. And Chad Henner, the senior, native Pennsylvania. Is going to have to put it up and put it up on the money in a hurry to get him within field goal range. We mentioned Gingell, their kicker, had never kicked a field goal in college before today, and he's hit two. Last one was blocked. Penny, good protection. Close to the far side, incomplete. He had an eye on Matthews. Boy, what a quiet day it has been for Henny and this talented group of wide receivers. Penny has hit on 18 of 36 for 187 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Matthews has seven catches. Mario Manningham has two for 20 yards. Awfully quiet days, a lot of credit to the Appalachian State corners. And right now, the guys in the middle of the field, 47, Corey Lynch, 22, Leonard Love, a lot of pressure on them. They can't let anyone behind them. Penny steps up, puts it in the air down the sideline, looking for Manningham. A flag is down. He caught the ball at the 20-yard line. Now, what's the call? Is he going to call offensive pass interference because there was body contact between the two? Pass interference on the defense. The penalty is declined. First down. That's on Wose in a 46-yard completion. You gotta kick the field goal here, don't you? You are out of timeouts. No, you have one left. Michigan has one left. You have one left, but there's only six seconds. I think you have to kick the field goal here. Timeout, Michigan. Your third and final timeout. You and I in the first game timeout. we ever did together <laughs> in college football was Boise State in Oklahoma last year in the right, desert, right. out in Phoenix, Arizona, when Boise State shocked the world. Today, Appalachian State kicks a field goal in the final seconds to go up by two. And now this, a big pass play to get Michigan a chance to win it. You think Coach is going to be happy to see us next week? I mean, the, you know, we've taken on all these big guys, and that's just tough for them. Here we go. They're going to kick the field goal. It'll be Jason and Gingell. Out of the hole to Mesco. Good snap. Good hold. And the kick is blocked. Appalachian State has stunned the college football world. One of the greatest upsets in sports history. Blocked by Corey Lynch. just a crowning achievement for him right here even uh, it won't be any more important than those last two national championships but it certainly ranks right in there close and it just shows you i think what we've got good football in one double a football what used to be one double a football we're we're proud of our football team and we beat a good michigan football team right here on this field that's what's so remarkable about this i should have given you a moment to catch your breath because i think everyone in this big house right now is still holding their breath what do you say to your team with a performance like this <laughs> It's just, you know, they just got blessed and they're just a bunch of great kids that uh, a huge commitment and uh, just a, a crowning achievement for them. For them, they've worked so hard 
to get where they are right now. I can't tell you how hard we work during two-day practices, and you know, I'll pay you all for them right here today. And just in case you forgot, one of the biggest upsets in college football history. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Well, Boone, North Carolina is called the brightest star in the constellation of communities that dot the Blue Ridge Mountains. And they are the brightest stars in college football on this opening Saturday of the 2007 year. Our Cooper Tire stop of the game, the block on the game-winning field goal try. How about them? And it was Corey Lynch who not only blocked the field goal attempt, picked it up and ran out the clock. Now, the smart play is to just go down at this point. You don't want to fumble it and have something crazy happen where Michigan can pick it up and advance it. But who is going to tell him no at that stage? Congratulations, Appalachian State. Carissa standing by with the young quarterback, Armonte Edwards. Carissa. One word to describe what just happened out there. We just beat Michigan, you know, plain and simple. We've been studying them real hard, and we saw some openings in, our, in their defense, and we executed. Armani Edwards, if people didn't know your name before today, they sure do now. You had a nearly perfect first half, a couple flub-ups in the second half, but needless to say, your team came out, and you just beat Michigan in one of the biggest upsets in college football history. Yeah, um, you know, the second half, we had a lot of mental mistakes because we was up, but we got back on it in the fourth quarter. Were you more impressed with your guys' offense or the way that your defense stopped the Michigan offense? It, both sides, but really on offense, we already knew what we had to do, and if they played like they played today, we could beat anybody. On defense, I really haven't seen our defense, but I know they're good. A great performance by you, Imani Edwards, and your entire team, Appalachian State. Back to you guys. Imani, you think it's the biggest upset in the history of college? What a day, what a day. Charles, the biggest upset in the history of football for you, yes or no? For me, yes. For me, Let's yes. Send it back to Chicago. What a start on the Big Ten Network.